Hey, it's Pete. Today I thought I'd make a short video about a book I read last month. I came across this book on a podcast that I use to try and learn Spanish. It's not a Spanish book. There's a podcast called One Book in an Hour, uh, Un Libro, Una Hora, uh, where they discuss a different classic book or sometimes more contemporary books. And I had been planning to read Frankenstein, uh, reread Frankenstein. I want to read the 1818 edition, the original published edition, because the one I read originally back in high school was whatever the Signet Classic one was, I think it was Signet Classic, or one of the, the TP paperbacks available at the time, and along the years I heard there was uh, an earlier vi uh, version that had some chapters that were later edited out, and that's called the 1818 version, based on the year it was published. So, I had that in my mind to read, and then this uh, on this podcast they start talking about this other book by her, by Mary Shelley, called Matilda, which I'd never heard of. So I thought I'd read that first because I found it on Project Gutenberg. This is the version I read, Matilda by Mary Wollstonecraft Shelley, and this particular version I got that you could download on on Project Gutenberg had an alternate fragment, first draft fragment, which I did not read. Um, it's Matilda is a story of a young woman named Matilda who's it's it's about her her life and her relationship with her father. It's only about 80 pages long, I think, maybe 100 pages long. It goes very quick. It's uh, very much in the romantic tradition. So it starts out her father, it starts out with her father's uh as the main character who he his mother dies, and in his grief, he gets married to this woman, young woman that he grew up with, and they have a child who will become Matilda, and Matilda's mother dies in childbirth, and then her father is so grief-stricken stricken by this that he doesn't even look at her never even lays eyes on her. He just gives her over to an aunt. He goes away someplace, doesn't come back till she's 16 years old. And I'm not going to go through the whole story, but uh, he comes back when she's 16 years old. He is shocked by how much she reminds him of his wife, and he goes nuts. He goes insane in his reaction towards her and his obsession with her. and. It's basically about those two characters, Matilda and her father, who she doesn't really meet till she till he's till she's sixteen, and this third character, which is the the love of young Matilda's life, who this character is based pretty much on Mary Shelley's husband, Percy Shelley. Uh, it's kind of an, a very idealized version of Shelley, I guess. She tried to get this published. She had written it at a time when she was very depressed. You can really, uh, as you read the book, you can tell it's really a, a book about depression because Matilda's father is so heartbroken and depressed, first by his mother's death, then by his wife's death. Uh, Mary Shelley herself had gone through two terrible tragedies very close together when both her infant children died one after another and this is about the time in her life when she started writing Matilda. Like I say it's only about 80 pages long. It's a little uh, undeveloped. I think it would appeal to people who are just really interested in Mary Shelley. It was not published at all until 1959. She, After she wrote it she gave she gave a copy to some friends to, to take back to England. I, I assume she was living in Italy at the time, hanging out with Lord Byron and doing all this bohemian stuff that they, that little cir that circle of people did. And she gave the novel, the manuscript to a friend of hers to take back to her father and to see about getting published. And he did not act on that. He. I think from some of the things I read on Wikipedia and other places, he didn't uh, consider it worth publishing. He didn't think it was ready for publication, but there may have been more to it because when you think about the the, the biographies of these people, Mary Shelley, 
Mary Shelley's mother, Mary Wollstonecraft, who is, of course, a very famous uh, writer, feminist icon, Mary Wollstonecraft, died a few days after Mary, her daughter, was born. They're both named Mary, obviously. And so there's that kind of biographical impetus for the novel. I mean, I wouldn't uh, read any more into it than that. I wouldn't say that it's like a you know, biographical novel of how she felt about her father's relationship towards her or anything like that. But you can just imagine what it would be like to <laughs> to receive a novel on the premise that that of a father of a of a young girl who becomes obsessed with her because she looks like her mother who died during childbirth. And it reminded me of another novel I'd read recently, or not that recently, but one of my favorite novels by Henry James called Washington Square, which was similar sort of inciting incident or premise or whatever you want to call it because in that novel there's a there's a father single father raising his daughter with the help of an aunt um, who likewise had a, a wife he loved very much who died in the birth of of the daughter and his relation to, toward his daughter which is really not comparable in any other way to to the story of Matilda but just Obviously, it's a pretty good premise for an all. I mean, it happened all the time back in those days, I'm sure, uh, when people, when unfortunately so many women died in childbirth. And so it reminded me of that. I would say, as a novel, just as a read compared to Frankenstein, which is all I've ever read by Mary Shelley before, I know she has some later novels too. This is her second major work after writing Frankenstein, and she was never able to find a publisher. I think it could have used a little more work too. It's really more of a curiosity, I would say, just to, if you're interested in Mary Shelley and you know, and her circle, her her circle of the, the romantic writers, uh, you know, and the things that they were preoccupied preoccupied with, and uh, their kind of obsessions. And it's not as well conceived. It's not as well conceived or as, as well executed as. Frankenstein, but if you're interested at all in Frankenstein or in writers of that era, I, th I think it's worth reading because it is so short. She uh, still has that emotional power to her writing that she has in Frankenstein as well. I think it could have been a really excellent novel if she'd done more with it, if she'd uh, spent more time on it maybe or developed it more. There's really a lot going on in those few pages it could have been explored more. Uh, if you if you are a fan of Wuthering Heights, you might like it too. It's a similar kind of thing. It's these obsessive loves and stuff. The the father's obsessive love for his wife, which could have been uh, longer. That part could have gone on longer. And the I felt the uh, the conclusion was a bit abrupt. I don't want to go into it that much, but I felt like sort of a, there's really a heightened emotional state between the father and daughter uh, very disturbing kind of emotional relationship but it really just kind of falls apart after that point where she's we see uh, Matilda telling the story to her to the the Shelley the Percy Shelley sort of uh, character she and it ends very abruptly i think there was probably more going on that maybe she didn't want to when i get too far into i don't know uh it's worth reading i said that already didn't i that's that's really it i mean they were you know the romantics were obsessed with certain kind of themes and and emotionally dark references and I enjoyed reading it I'm looking forward to reading Frankenstein again and this is kind of a I would call it more of a curiosity but if you're interested in romantic literature of that era or if you're interested in uh, Victorian novels this is pre-Victorian but it's you know the beginning of the 19th century and sort of subjects that people would start writing about and 
I enjoyed it a lot. So that's what I have to say about it. Pick it up on Project Gutenberg for free. There's plenty of there's plenty of um, cheap versions on Kindle too, ninety nine cents. Everybody puts their own different cover on it, and and I am glad I read it. And I'm looking forward to Frankenstein soon. Okay, I guess that'll be it for this, and I'll talk to you next time.